He wants you to hear his voice. More than you and I can ever imagine, he wants us to hear his voice, to hear him. And so we're going to just cover some of that here today about listening. <clears throat> and it starts in Psalms 81, if you've got your Bibles. And we see this repeated pattern with the children of Israel. And many of you know this. You know, they, they, they would see even the miraculous things that God has done. Remember that when they came through the Red Sea and, and into the Promised Land. <clears throat> wow, I didn't even see this. In my caption on Psalms 81, it said, For the choir director, a psalm of Asaph to be accompanied by a stringed instrument. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I just, <laughs> all right, I appreciate that. That's, that's wild. Wow. Sing praises to God, verse 1, our strength. Sing to the God of Jacob. Sing. Beat the tambourine. Play the sweet lyre and the harp. And I'll throw in the guitar. Blow the ram's horn at new moon, and again at full moon to call a festival. For this is required by the decrees of Israel. It is a regulation of the God of Jacob, who made it a law for Israel when he attacked Egypt to set us free. I heard an unknown voice say, now I will take the load from your shoulders. <laughs> I heard an unknown voice say, now I will take the load from your shoulders. I will free your hands from their heavy tasks. You cried to me in trouble and I saved you. He's talking about the children of Israel, but boy, doesn't it sound familiar? Have you done this? I do it all the time, constantly. Help, Lord. And I answered you out of the thundercloud and tested your faith when there was no water at Meribah. Listen to me, O oh my people, while I give you stern warnings. O oh Israel, if you would only listen to me, you must never have a foreign God. You must not bow down before a false God. For it was I, the Lord your God, who rescued you from the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it with good things. But no, my people wouldn't listen. Israel did not want me around. I like the New Living Translation. I like it sometimes. And uh, Their advertisement says, uh, the Bible was meant to be understood. I appreciate that. I like to understand the Bible. And so I like the way they say it here, but my, no, my people wouldn't listen. Israel didn't want me around. Is there ever times you didn't want the Lord around? Yeah, when we're doing something wrong. <laughs> You're doing something wrong. Is it God, you know? So I let them follow their own stubborn desires. Living according, this is the one that got me, I reread this this morning, living according to their own ideas. Whew. Living according to their own ideas. And here's the verse that stood out to me, and I believe, a, 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 you know, the key verse for us today. Oh, that my people would listen to me. Oh, that Israel would follow me, walking in my paths. How quickly I would subdue their enemies. Stand back and let you move. Stand back and hear what the Lord is saying. 
saying to you. And this is what, church, that we are really responsible for. What is the Lord saying to you, and what are you doing with what he is saying? This is what we're accountable for. Well, I don't know what the Lord is saying. Well, then it's time to know what he's saying. Not what you think he's saying, but what he's saying. <clears throat> and that requires, a just you know, you got to just stand back. And even this morning, there was, we forgot our CDs, and I was getting all tweaked out about it in the prayer room, and I had to let that go. <laughs> I said, Come on, you know, life will go on. <laughs> You'll be here next Sunday. All these little, isn't that funny how these little things do that? They just trip us out. But, <clears throat> excuse me, if we are standing and resting, resting, we're going to talk about that in a little bit here, resting in what God has spoken already. Just, you know what? That's what the Holy Spirit comes in. He reminds us of what the Lord said. Do you remember I said this to you a week ago or a couple, you know? And he takes you back to that which is in the backdrop of your heart and in your spirit. And he reminds you what he spoke to you. Oh, that my people would just listen to me. I would soon subdue their anxiousness. I soon would subdue those thoughts that are trying to trip you out. And so I believe the Lord wants to address this today in us and, and um, that we can be free and be at peace and go on with, you know, what God wants us to go on with. Amen? And so here's something. Uh, let's get to the New Testament, John 10, 27. This is one short verse that I have memorized. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. My sheep know my voice, and they follow me. I know them, and they follow me. Isn't that assuring? Beautiful. Psalms 10, 27, my sheep listen to my voice. New Living Translation says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Now there it says here, but we're talking about listening today. That's the only, just put listen there and swear instead of where here is. My sheep Listen to my voice, and I know them. I know what they're going through, and they follow me. There's another, go over to, some, while you're there in John, go to 18 to 37. I never saw this before until recently when Jesus was standing before Pilate. Pilate said, so you're a king. Jesus responded, you say I am a king. Actually, I was born and came into the world to testify to the truth. And all who love the truth recognize what I say is true. They know that what I say is truth because they're my sheep. And I know them, and they hear my voice. So where are we to go with this? Isaiah 30, 15. That's been something that is... Do you understand what I'm saying? I, you, I know you do, but it, it's in the backdrop. You ever, like... There's certain music or something. There's something that's kind of in the backdrop, you know, of our thinking, in our hearts, or what we listen to. And, and, 
and, and it's the Lord. It's just like he's kind of tucked back in there. And he says, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, I'm with you, okay. And uh, I love this, what it says. Th this scripture has been that to me. In Isaiah 30. Verse 15. This is what the Sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel says. Only in returning to me, in resting in me, you will be saved. In returning, in resting in me, you will be saved. And in the New American Standard, that says in repentance and rest. So we repent of getting all tweaked out. We repent of being anxious when we didn't have to be anxious. And be quick to do that. I've been learning, just, I'm quick to do that. Lord, I'm sorry about this. I let it go. Let's go have church. <laughs> you know? Quick to repent and return to your rest. Hebrews talks a lot about that, too. They couldn't enter into his rest because of unbelief. And there's a rest for us. And God is calling us to return to that, to that place of quietness. And this is where you learn to hear the voice of God, right? Amen. Amen. I know there's so many that have a real struggle sleeping eight hours. It just doesn't happen. And I'm amongst them. <laughs> and something that God is teaching and I'm enjoying through the process at three in the morning and I can't get back to sleep? <laughs> well, devotion time is going to start a little earlier today. <laughs> Instead of eight or seven in the morning, we're going to have it at three in the morning. When it's nice and quiet. It's just peaceful. You don't have to worry about anything. <laughs> and you can enjoy him in the quiet. And where I started learning that was when I had my heart attack, quadruple bypass, and I was in the hospital how many of you know when you go to the hospital, you don't sleep? You know that? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. They come at four in the morning and poke you. <laughs> you don't sleep. So you have moments to just lay there. And it was in that time that I learned to just enjoy the Lord's presence that which we've had here this morning already. To just rest in that. That's what he's talking about here. Quietness, confidence. Where I can love you and you can love me and we can just be together. That's what we were called to do. That's our number one calling, is to be with him. Abide. This is a place of abiding we're talking about. This is not a theory or a concept. This is a place of being with Jesus, where we're supposed to be. You're supposed to be peaceful. You're created to be restful. You're created to hear the voice of God. And I want to speak to you, says the Lord. Be still and know that I am God. And so he was saying that to the children of Israel, and then they, but they said, no, we won't. He said, well, then you're going to be, end up like a flag, on a, a flag pole on a mountain. <laughs> you just, your enemies will come and get at you quickly. But in returning and rest, quietness and confidence shall be your, your strength. And not only is it a place that we're to remain in, it's a strategic 
position. See, and that's what the enemy does not want you and I to get into our place of position in the kingdom of God. And he'll take, and it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. Talks about in Solomon. Them little ones. It's not the big things that trip you up. It's the little ones. I learned another thing. I don't know if this has happened to you, but if it hasn't, I'm going to give you a practical warning this morning. Do not check your messages on your phone at 3 in the morning. Do not do that. Wrong, wrong, wrong. (laughs) I did that the other morning, and it messed up my whole next day. I got clobbered by the enemy the next day, all kinds of stuff. And all I had to do was just lay there and be quiet and enjoy the presence of the Lord, read your devotion, put on soaking music, do something, but do not check your messages. (laughs) And so it's a war, it's a battle. But it's a wonderful place when you could just sit there and say, you know what? I don't have to do nothing. (laughs) But just sit here and enjoy him who is, who was, and always will be the I am ever-present God who's here. He's here. I don't have to pray in tongues for a half hour real loud. (laughs) I tried that one morning and I, I did hear a voice. So what are you doing? <laughs> and then I had to confess to the Lord, Lord, I don't even feel like praying. Well, then just sit still. <laughs> and as I sat still, it was quiet. After about a half hour, man, when we started praying in tongues, it roared. It was of the Spirit. Stand back. Oh, that my people would listen to me. I soon would subdue. He'll, the battle is his, right? You know this. Well, let's listen. See, we're responsible for what he's saying to us today. We all die here tonight. Somebody comes in, wipes us out. You know, <laughs> and, uh, God forbid, but that we're responsible for what he's saying today. Yesterday's gone, tomorrow's not here. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. And so it's bringing us into a position when the trials and the tribulations and the things come, when it does get bad, that we have a peace in our heart. And we're able to hear his voice. Turn to Romans 10. Because we were talking a little bit here this morning, too, about faith. Oh, that my people would listen to me. Romans 12. And that takes faith. That takes faith. You're very familiar with this verse in um, Romans 10, excuse me. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing. See? Again, the enemy doesn't want you to apply the faith you already have. You have it. You don't have to conjure. God's given you a measure of faith. You want, the Holy Spirit activates it. You see? It takes faith to be quiet. It takes faith not to feel like, oh, I got to do something. I'm looking at Mary because I'm thinking about Martha and Mary. (laughs) 
You know, Martha had to be busy. Jesus is here. We got to do this. Mary chose the better thing. To sit at his feet and what? Listen. So faith comes from hearing, that is hearing the good news about Christ. And to hear what the Lord is saying. A.W. A. Tozer gave an excellent description of faith. Faith is a redirecting of our sight. Okay? So you come, we, we, we come before the Lord. We lay there by faith. We walk by faith. We walk by, not by sight. And what it does, this faith brings us into the position we're supposed to be in. So we can hear clearly. We can see clearly. Okay? So it comes to from a returning and a rest. And we're doing that by faith. And in doing so, we remain in the peace of God. We remain in the position God wants us to be in. You're just where I, I've got you. Just where you want. Where I want you. So yeah, I can listen to you. And this may seem hard to you, but, but I got it all under control. You're just right where you need to be right now. And I'm, gonna, I'm redirecting. See, we're in the body of Christ. This is a time of transition. We're going from one place to another. Transition is awkward. Transition causes friction. Transition causes anxiety. All this kind of thing. We don't understand because we don't know where we're going. <laughs> because we've never been here where, where God wants to take us. We're in transition, and that takes faith, and that takes trust, and that finally, and when we can't figure it out, we just rest in the Lord. Thank you, Lord. The battle is yours. You've got it all under control. And that's the hardest thing for us. And so we need to listen. Just listen. If he isn't saying anything, enjoy the quiet. And here's something else that has helped. What was the last thing he said to you? Have you obeyed that? Amen. See? You're not here. You want to hear something now? What was the last thing he said to you? This is where the Holy Spirit comes and reminds us, right? I... I so want to know more and more who the Holy Spirit is. Yeah. It was so humbling in that quiet time. But I finally, but the Holy Spirit revealed, he said, could you imagine if one of your relatives or somebody come up to you and said, who's the Holy Spirit? What would you say to them? How would you describe the Spirit of God? Well, um, he's a spirit. Oh, that's deep, you know. <laughs> and I realize Holy Spirit, I don't know you. But Jesus said, I'll send him to you and he will teach you and bring you into the truth and the truth will set you free. Holy Spirit, would you teach me who you are? What's a better way to know the Holy Spirit than by the Holy Spirit? <laughs> Somebody say, duh. duh. Yeah, duh. <laughs> Isn't that amazing, the revelation you get when you just be quiet? <laughs> and so we just yield to that spirit in that time of, of stillness and just yield and as we were even praying this morning it's so beautiful to hear Pastor Clyde and, 
it, you know, as, as we just sat in the office and just gave it all to God. I felt peace, brother, while you were praying. And that's what it started releasing. We're carrying stuff way too big of loads we don't need to carry. Amen. All of us. Too much baggage. Oh, that my people would listen to me. I have things I want to tell you. I've been waiting for a long time. And let's cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Let's yield to the Holy Spirit. Just bring us in that position. Just show up. Just hang out and be with Him. That's not too complicated, is it? It's okay to just lay there and be quiet and just enjoy that. And if your mind gets active with it, put on some music. Some, I listen to a lot of soaking music. And the Lord has had two, two I've been give, taking more communion lately. Just to be reminded of the blood of Jesus and cleanses our conscience and our mind and the body that it was given and you can give yourself communion. You don't have to put on the robe or be religious or <laughs> make a, you know, just however the Lord would direct you. But that you hear his voice. A couple of closing scriptures here. Today, Isaiah 42. No, forget that. I'm, I'm sorry. Go, go to Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12, I'm sorry. And isn't it something when you read through the scripture and all the different Bible characters and, you know, they're stories of heroics like Elijah and even the disciples. Who we see at times we hear about when they were in the flesh, especially like Peter, when the Spirit of God came on them and people were even saved or you know, healed in his shadow, and yet we saw God do powerful things. And I say that because it helps me that what God can do with flesh, <laughs> and he did it for them, he can do it for us, amen? It says that about Elijah. He was a man of like passions like us. And so in Hebrews 12, it says, Therefore, since we're surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses, Peter, Elijah, we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith. We're surrounded by people that have flesh just like that, that God came and, and did powerful things those who had a life of faith. Let us strip off every weight that slows us down. Amen. Especially, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. That just blows my mind how 
This was written thousands and thousands of years ago, and it's talking about sin, and it says it easily trips us up. They got tripped up easily. We get tripped up easily. <laughs> it hasn't changed. But there's two words that make a difference. But God. <laughs> but God. And if we listen to God and allow His Spirit to teach us and bring us to that place where we can hear and receive. Let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Keeping our eyes on Jesus. So the three things today, just to listening, just for, to capsulize this today. To listen, to hear, and yield. To listen. God speaks to you in a certain way. He speaks to you in a certain way. And he speaks to you in a certain way. He speaks to me in a way. Let us listen. And you have faith, you have faith, you have faith. And it's alive. The enemy's trying to squinch it. But be encouraged today, it's alive. And let's just draw near to just hear, to listen, and to yield our hearts to him today. And so, Father, we pray, God of Jesus' name, that, Lord, you would give us an ear. Lord, if we got wax in our ears, remove it. Whatever is clogging up the hearing, Lord, that you would that be removed, that we could hear. Help us to listen. Holy Spirit, you are our helper. Help us to listen. We yield our hearts, Lord, right now. We just yield to you, Father. We thank you. Lord, we, we repent of the little things that we have let this last week just trip us up. And God, we thank you. You remember that we are flesh. And you would just wash us afresh with the blood of Jesus today. Renew our strength, our courage, our hope, Lord, for this week. That we can just rest in you. And Lord, that you would just bring us into that place where we can hear that still small voice behind us saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. Amen. 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 Well, we look forward to being with you next Sunday here. If any of you need prayer today for anything, some healing or something, further prayer, come up and we'll, we'll gladly pray with you. And So, Lord, bless you, keep you, lift up his countenance upon you, and give you his peace, his strength this week, and go in his peace, in Jesus' name. Amen.